Hello guys and welcome back to Oxygen Not Included. Now in this video I will talk about insulation and different uh, methods to keep heat at its place, so to say. Let's first of all go through insulated tiles. Uh, depending on what material you use to create an insulated tile, you will receive a different thermal conductivity. Of course, for the best material in the game, and that is insulation, of course, uh, you will receive the best uh, yeah, insulation as well. As you can see here in the set called thermal conductivity, this is perfectly zero. So there won't be any heat transfer going on with this material. And you can also see that from the temperature, uh, it's still at 20 degrees, that's exactly the temperature uh, I build it from and it has never changed, even though the hydrogen around is like almost 300 degrees hot. Moving further to the second best insulator, that's gonna be ceramic. Uh, that's somehow like a mid-game, mid, even sometimes early game material you can have access uh, to, but sometimes it is limited because you don't have enough coal or uh, clay available to produce more of that. This one provides a decent uh, conductivity of just 0 0.006, so it's pretty much almost perfect uh, insulator. As you can see, this one has heated up in time, it's at 25 degrees, but still I've let this run like 10 to 15 cycles, something like that. And yeah, 5 degrees over that period of time is not that much, actually. But uh, if you don't have ceramics available in your base, you could also use mafic rock. That's a thermal conductivity of 0.01 already, so almost twice the conductivity of ceramics already. That could be of use in case you don't have enough ceramics available. And I'm going even one uh, material further here and that is yeah, pretty much making insulated tiles from either, either uh, obsidian, uh, fossil, sedimentary rock or igneous rock. You should have w at least one of these available like infinitely in your base. Whatever you can uh, yeah, have access to you should use for some basic insulation. Maybe the only one I actually wouldn't use is fossil because that can be important to create some lime for steel production as well and typically is very limited. I'm not going into any other materials here because that's like the ones you should have access to a lot in any base. So how to create an insulation actually for that we are going to test something. You see this little room with two chambers there is currently a vacuum and the insulated tiles are created from ceramics. So I'm gonna pause the game and I'm just gonna play liquid hydrogen on the left side and magma on the right side. That's pretty much the highest temperature difference you realistically can have in your base. That's minus 255 for hydrogen and 1700 for hot magma. I'm just gonna let this run. As you can see, it seems the hydrogen is not heating up, at least not in a period of time we can actually see. The game is at 3 speed, as you can see, and nothing seems to happen. Also, the insulated tiles seem to be stuck at 20 degrees. So this is already a very decent insulation in place, you could say. Moving further for that, I'm gonna use one of those materials. In that case, it's igneous rock, so remember that's not a perfect insulator, 0.02 already. And we are going to do exactly the same again. Magma on the right and what was it? Hydrogen on the left, liquid. And unpause the game. Are we actually seeing anything here? Mm, well, there's a little temperature change in the igneous rock, 0.1 degrees here, so no problem. And also you can see there's no change in the magma. So still, this is a decent insulation. If there is nothing else directly attached or it doesn't have any yeah, connection to a um, heat conductive tile, so to say. 
So, so far I've only talked about really insulators, but you could also make regular tiles from the same materials, like igneous rock. I've got that here on the right hand side, and we are going to do the same test again. Liquid hydrogen to the right, and magma to the right, so hydrogen to the left and magma to the right. As you can see here, and unpause the game now, as you can see, the hydrogen is already losing a lot of yeah, its minus temperatures. And also the magma is already down like 50 degrees, and <laughs> as you can see on the, on the tile as well. So this is a very fast um, heat transfer. And that is because the regular tile doesn't have this yeah, ability or property called insulated. That's pretty much the the only difference it has, and therefore it gets a huge amount of thermal conductivity of 2, as you were able to see in this little test. And the same of course goes for insulated liquid pipes and insulated gas pipes. Just in case you want heat insulation, don't use the regular version, so the liquid pipe. Always use the insulated one. But what to do actually if you don't have access to endgame materials? Well, you could also double wall um, these little chambers. So I'm gonna pause the game again. Magma to the right and hydrogen in a liquid form to the left. And as you can see, this one also has like zero heat transfer going on, just because it's a double tile. In case you use double tiles, um, the stat of a single tile would multiply with the other one. So basically you are receiving a thermal conductivity of 0 0.02 multiplied with 0 0.02. So that's uh, pretty much the level of ceramics. Uh, it's almost the same. And what else could you do to really insulate things without having access to end game materials. Again, we have an outer layer of insulated tiles, a little liquid lock, so we can have a vacuum inside here. Because vacuum is a perfect insulator, it doesn't transfer any heat because there's no atoms in it, so nothing to transfer heat. And inside that we have a little chamber which is not connected to the outside, as you can see here. And you can fill your uh, yeah, heat resistant material in here. So the only place it is having heat transfer with is the outside tile, pretty much the igneous rock. And after that, in this case, the bunker tile. So you don't actually need to place the bunker tile in this case, it's just used in case anything stupid happens inside here, like overpressure or, some, or overheat or something. The bunker tile gives you additional security that it doesn't actually mess up your base. So with this little build you have a perfect insulation as soon as pretty much the insulated tiles have dropped in temperature. Uh, or becoming closer to the temperature of the material inside. So I've been talking quite a bit of time. I want to ch uh, check what happened in the meantime with these builds. As you can see, this one was built from ceramics. There's no heat transfer visible. So keep that in mind, ceramics is a very good heat insulator already. Moving further to the insulated tiles from igneous rock, as you can see here. Like the only thing we can actually see is that the temperature of the insulated tiles in between have changed by 0.1 or 0.2 degrees, but yeah, the materials in this in these little chambers haven't changed anyway. So I consider this still a quite good insulator, even though it has a thermal conductivity of three times that of ceramics. And we should be able to see the same, of course, when you double wall it. Yeah, there's no real heat transfer happening here as well. So uh, that's pretty much it for this video, except for one thing. Um, there's a little problem with some mechanics in this game, and that is uh, like temp shift plates. Um, as soon as you have like temp shift plates, for example, here, the temperature is going to be transferred 
prepared here, 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 and yeah, basically all the eight tiles are around it. So as soon as I unpause the game, we should see that the temperature is changing very fast in this room. Yeah, you can see that it has dropped to 17.7, 17.17 something, and this tile specifically seems to heat up very fast. So you should always have one tile distance, like for instance, if this was your room, you should have one tile distance to the, let's say, border ring tile, so that way you don't have the heat transfer with the surroundings, as you can see. Now we have reached stability again. So I think with that I have covered the most important parts for heat transfer. Let me know in the comments below if you have anything else to add or if I did a mistake in here. Thanks for watching and see you next time.